Hey all, Adam the Exacto Guru here. First, let me apologize for the delayed video. I have been doing some much needed personal introspection to deal with some troubles I've had and recently moved into a new apartment. Today I'm going to discuss something that has been on my mind a lot lately. This is a topic that I've had personal struggle to uphold and have had some serious failings at doing so. I will be discussing the six Celtic virtues and I hope you'll bear with me. The six traits held to be most important by the Irish Celts are honor, honesty, loyalty, hospitality, courage, and justice. These were concepts which were considered to be more than a personal edict, but rather a communal code of conduct. We'll take a look at each one individually in terms of how the ancestors viewed each one and incorporated them into their daily lives. Let's start with the one that seems to have been most important. Honor. The Irish word for honor is inich, which meant face, and was, re and was used to refer to the concept of saving face. Not in the way we use that term now, but more in terms of accountability for one's actions. A person's reputation was seen as imperative to good community. In the Irish tradition, if one broke this virtue, the person wronged would sit outside the home of the wrongdoer in fasting from dawn till dusk. During the time of fasting, the transgression would be made public knowledge, and if the wrongdoer allowed the person wronged to go hungry while they continued to eat, shame was brought upon their home. In this way, most honor violations were dealt with privately between two parties. According to the tales of Ossian, Finn McCool expected his warriors to abide by the following, which I think sums up the importance of honor quite well. If you have a mind to be a good champion, be quiet in a great man's house, be surly in the narrow pass, do not beat your hound without a cause, do not bring a charge against your wife without having knowledge of her guilt, do not hurt a fool in fighting, for he is without his wits. Do not find fault with high up persons. Do not stand up to take part in a quarrel. Have no dealings with a bad man or a foolish man. Let two thirds of your gentleness be showed to women and to little children that are creeping upon the floor, and to men of learning that make the poems. And do not be rough with the common people. Do not give your reverence to all. Do not be ready to have one bed with your companions. Do not threaten or speak big words, for it is a shameful thing to speak stiffly unless you can carry it out afterward. Do not forsake your Lord so long as you live. Do not give up any man that puts himself under your protection for all the treasures of the world. Do not speak against others to their Lord. That is not work for a good man. Do not be a bearer of lying stories, or a tale-bearer that is always chattering. Do not be talking too much. Do not find fault hastily. However brave you may be, do not raise factions against you. Do not be going to drinking houses, or finding fault with the old men. Do not meddle with low people. This is right conduct, I am telling you. Do not refuse to share your meat. Do not have a miser for your friend. Do not force yourself on a great man, or give him occasion to speak against you. Hold fast to your arms, till the hard fight is well ended. Do not give up your opportunity, but with that follow after gentleness. The word for honesty in the old language is indrak, the concept of which being that of openness and being straightforward in one's dealings. In other words, doing what you say you will do, and maintaining your word as your bond. There are examples of this throughout the Irish folklore. One of the best being the story of young Finn McCool and the Salmon of Knowledge. Finn was sent by his mentor, the druid Finnegus, to find the salmon in a nearby stream. Finn, upon finding the salmon, realizes that by eating the salmon, he could have the wealth of all knowledge. He struggles with this momentarily. But upon the realization that he would then 
have to lie to his mentor, decides to take the Simon back to Finnegus, as instructed. The virtue of loyalty is Teresio in the Irish tongue, which means steadfast. In tradition, it is the concept of maintaining consistency within one's relationships, basically meaning that the way in which we interact with one person should be the way we interact with all others. One of the best examples of this lies in the story of the cattle raid of Cooley. When Med sends Fergus to battle against his foster son, Cullain, Fergus instead cries off the fight, begging Cullain to yield. Cullain agrees on the condition that, should they meet on the battlefield again, it will be Fergus's turn to yield. Fergus agrees to these terms, and when they do meet again for final battle, Cullain reminds his foster father of their arrangement. Fergus responds by calling Medeb's warriors to retreat, risking both utter defeat and the wrath of his queen. The Irish word for hospitality is oigdicht, meaning stranger or newcomer, and pertained to the treatment of guests in the home. To the ancestors, this was of vital importance, as inns were few and far between, most communities not having external lodging for guests. This concept was so ingrained into the Irish people that it is customary today to ensure one's guests are cared for and impolite to refuse said accommodation. In ancient times, to refuse was seen as taboo, and usually resulted in an unfavorable consequence for those who did. An example of the importance of hospitality is seen in the story of Cullain. Cullain, upon slaughtering Cullen's hounds, was forbidden from consuming dog meat. While traveling, he encounters an old woman who offers him a meal consisting of dog meat. This put the warrior in quandary. To eat the dog meat and violate one's personal taboo, or to refuse hospitality and break the communal code. To avoid damage to his reputation, and thus his honor, Cullain chooses to violate his personal taboo and accept a meal. The old word for courage is maisnak, meaning to keep one's head. In other words, to stay calm under pressure and to avoid panic. To the warrior, this also meant to avoid being swayed by pity. This would have enabled them to deal death where necessary in battle, despite their immense respect for all life. One of the best examples of courage is that of Cullain in the battle against Medeb's army. After being forced to run a race against the king's horses while pregnant, Macha collapsed upon winning, her labor being induced by the race. Upon her dying breath, she cursed the Ulstermen to experience her labor pains, rendering them incapable of battle. As Medeb's army advanced, 17-year-old Cullain mounted a series of successful ambushes and single combats to hold them off for months until the Ulstermen recovered from their pain and sickness. The Irish word for justice is coer, which means in accordance with the truth. The Irish held that through truth, one could find redemption for their transgressions. Their system of law dispensed justice in the form of fines and was based on an honor code. This system was implemented by Cormac Macar, High King of Ireland, and did not have a version of corporal punishment. It governed everything from family law, healthcare, and commerce to the protection of nature. An early account of his use of this system predates his kingship. At the age of 30, Cormac happened upon a crying woman. When he approached and asked why she wept, the woman explained that her sheep had wandered into the queen's garden and ate the herbs there. The acting king had confiscated her sheep, leaving the woman with no source of income. Cormac sought counsel with the king, saying, more fitting would be one shearing for another, to which the king agreed, since both the fleeces and the crop would regrow. I'm sure you're starting to see why the Irish Celts held these virtues in such high regard. They are not the easiest things to always abide, no. But we are not expected to be perfect. 
The fact that there are multiple ways in which the ancients were allowed to make amends says that this was ultimately a system of atonement and forgiveness. In fact, while I have transgressed against others in my past, including recently, I have tried to rebuild and maintain my adherence to these virtues. Most of these are concepts that I've held to be important even before finding my new religion. The truth is, they really amount, simply, to not being a dick. Yes, we all stumble from time to time, but the path is there, and we can all regain our footing through hard work and patience. Well, those are my thoughts. This video was a little longer than most of my other ones, and if you've stuck with me this far, thank you so much. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Going forward, I'm looking forward to sharing my continuing journey with you all on a more regular basis. For now, I'm the Exacto Guru, reminding you to be excellent to each other. 